What is happening all you sexy YouTube warriors out there, Rams Day Bro, back at it again, and today we're going to be taking a look at this beast right here. This is the Daniel Defense DDM4A1 Block 2 Upper from Brownells.com. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so today we're going to be taking a look, a first look or unboxing video at the DDM4 Upper Receiver right here. It's the M4A1. I call it the Block 2. I'm not sure if they call it that or not, but it's the Block 2. It's got the SOCOM Profile Barrel. This one specifically I got from Brownells.com. I did not get the one that had the BCG or the charging handle, so this is my BCG and my charging handle from my Mark 18, which I have kind of retired for the meantime uh, to kind of do this review, but you can see uh, Daniel Defense BCG in here. This thing has a lot of rounds on it, probably going on like six or 7,000 rounds. Geisley charging handle, getting ahead of myself, but this one came in the box with no muzzle device, no BCG, no charging handle, and I kind of just put what I had on there, laying around on here rather, so to make it look like it did right here. But since I'm calling this an unboxing video, there's really not much to what came in the box. It came in a box like this. So they actually call this thing an M4A1 stripped SOCOM upper receiver handguard only 14.5 inch. So this is not pinned and welded, so if you're gonna put it on regular lower that's not an SBR lower, then just be aware of the SBR NFA laws. Or you can just go get it pinned and welded with whatever muzzle device you want to before you attach it to that lower. But essentially, nothing else came in the box besides a chamber flag. I had this nice egg cart foam in there, and then a little quality inspected by tag that was on there, as well as a chamber flag, and, and that's it. So not really much of an unboxing video. There's not much to say about it in the box, but let's talk about the upper itself. We're gonna be talking about the kind of first impressions, the way I have it set up, why I have it set up this way, but just the first impressions video. All right, so let's first talk about my, my desire to have this, acquire this upper receiver. So for the longest time, like many of you guys, I'm a millennial, I'm a huge fan of Call of Duty video games, and this is just the iconic M4 look. Of course, it's not the front sight post version, but this is kind of the evolution of the Block 2, so it has a truly free-floated barrel. This is a SOCOM profile barrel. It's a super bull barrel. I've always wanted one of these uppers, especially since a lot of my favorite YouTubers, gun tubers, did reviews on this thing several years ago. It's been out for a very long time. Some would even say this is kind of like firearm history at this point because it's been around and been in service for like 20 years. Now, I'm not a cloner, so please don't go furiously typing the comments, or go ahead, it's it's a sacrifice to the algorithm gods, it, every comment helps, so. This is not meant to be a clone, this is just my version of the M4A1 Block 2. Yeah, there's some clone-esque components, like the, like the ACOG, obviously the upper itself is pretty clone correct, being that it's directly from Daniel Defense, has the right profile barrel, the suppressor is not, the mount for the ACOG is not, the lower is not a Colt lower, it's a Daniel Defense lower. So let's just get that out of the way. This is not meant to be a clone or clone video or anything of that sort. From what I've been reading more and more about clone and cloners, I actually am more intrigued to go down that path. It is not conducive to my budget right now. I'm just kind of working with what I got. So I've always wanted this iconic quad rail look to the M4. This is kind of what I grew up seeing in video games and movies. This quad rail, this old school look. This has kind of been something that I've wanted for a very, very long time. So it kind of pains me to say that I also got the Riz 3 right here because the Riz 3 is the natural evolution from this to this. And I've had this now for probably about a week and a half, two weeks. And I really struggle with the idea of removing the quad rail, the Riz 2. Just something just feels so right about it. Yes, it is super heavy. It's out of the way, it's a super heavy front end, especially with the Salmon S on here, but even without the suppressor on there, it's still very heavy in an upper, but it feels great in hand. It feels like it should. It feels like you can you know, use this as a baseball bat and not have to worry about losing zero if you're running an IR laser aiming device or something like that. At the end of the day, I think that you guys will want me to change it out to the Riz 3, just kind of give you my opinion on that setup and to see if I like it as much as the Riz 2. But being that this barrel profile is so thick and that's gonna help with you know round counts remaining accurate over high round counts and when it's starting to really heat up, I think that the Riz 3 would really complement this barrel profile because it would be a much lighter weight front end. I'd be able to keep the super thick SOCOM profile barrel while being able to shed a little bit of weight up front and using a M-Lock setup like the Riz 3, which I'm sure, since it's from Daniel Fence, is, is just as quality. I don't know if it's just as durable. I don't think anything could be as durable. I mean, you can just look at the thickness on the sides of this thing right here. It's absolutely 
insane how thick this rail quad rail really is. I think it might be the natural evolution to go to the Riz 3, but for right now, it's gonna remain like this for at least several thousand rounds. I wanna put a couple thousand rounds with it through it like this. So kind of hinting at some videos I'm gonna be doing in the future. Obviously, there'll be a full review of this M4A1 Block 2 upper receiver right here. And then I'd like to pin it up against the URGI upper, which we have here in the back from Geisley. It's the 14.5 near clone. That one is pinned and welded with a Surefire muzzle device, the four prong. And I wanna put it up against that and I think it'd be a much more fair, equal lineup or competition rather if I had the Riz 3 on here versus the Riz 2 to kind of make it more apples to apples versus you know, a very old school, albeit proven rail here versus a more modern option like the Riz 3. So, but this video is not about the Riz 3, but let's just talk about it really quickly. So I also got the Riz 3 right here that you see, this is the 12.5, so it's the same exact length as the rail, as the Riz 2 that's on there. It comes with a wrench and it comes with the hardware you need to mount it up. The good thing about this is the hardware is backwards compatible to the Riz 2, so I wouldn't actually have to loosen up the barrel nut and all that. Actually, I've never installed one, I may have to, but I don't believe I have to do anything with the barrel nut on the Riz 2 in order to install this guy, but you can just tell, I'll come up close here so you guys can see this thing a little bit better. This thing has absolutely just absolute drop dead gorgeous vibes to it. It looks amazing. It just looks like the Riz 2 without without the quads and, and the M-Lock section in between. So kind of more like a crucifix shape, a little bit more like the crucifix shape that the Geisley has on the Mark 4s and the Mark 8s, which I really like that shape because it seems to give it a lot more rigidity than just the round ones like the Mark 16 that's on the URGI. But again, I'm not beating anybody up with these. I'm not slamming these against rocks. I'm not doing any torture testing, but just an observation here. I really, really like this. And to kind of just show you what it might look like, I know this is blasphemy here because I have my epitome of a M4 upper here but just to show you what it might look like with the Riz 3 on there now it's hard to tell but it is the correct length to perfectly match the Riz 2 the way it sits right now with a little bit probably like inch and a half to two inches there a barrel sticking out of the front so I'm really excited to have the Riz 3 and, and to see what it looks like and what it feels like in the future but for right now and even after I put that Riz 3 on there I think I'm going to restore it back to this current configuration because it is just such a vibe right here. I'm really in love with this thing. The fit and finish is phenomenal. I am sure that this barrel, even though it's chrome lined, is super accurate from everything I've read and seen. This is going to be an absolute tack driver. So I'm really excited to, to take it out to, to the range and, and take it out the distance, see if I can get out to 700 yards of this thing. But now that I've talked about kind of the fit and finish this thing, let's just talk about it real quickly because I know some of you guys are going to have questions about the way I have it set up and just talk about what I got on here. All right, so starting blast end to ass end, we're going to start up here at the muzzle device. This is the dead air flash hider. It's got all kinds of debris up here on this thing. So this is from my Mark 18. This has probably around five to 6,000 rounds on it. That is just a placeholder. Eventually, I'd like to put a surefire muzzle device in here. But those are like 200 bucks a piece. So for right now, this will do. Moving on back from there, obviously the infamous, the incredible, the strong as hell Riz 2 rail in the FDE color or their dark brown. I don't know what color they actually call this, but there it is. It looks phenomenal. Have some Magpul ladders on both sides as well as the Daniel Defense rail covers. I forgot to mention, it does come with four rail covers, these rubber rail covers right here in the box as well. I'm just not a huge fan of them, so I just run one on the top just for looks really and just feels kind of good right there on the top of my thumb. But besides that, it does come with those in the box, I forgot to mention. Underneath that Riz 2 rail is the SOCOM Profile Barrel. It's an absolute thick boy. I mean, it's even thicker than my MR556 from HK. I thought that was a thick barrel. This thing is even thicker than that. A lot of really good testing was done on this barrel by the US Special Forces and all the different branches of the military that actually adopted this weapon. They did tons of tests on this as well as Colt, piano defense themselves, Colt Hammer Forge, chrome line barrel. This is a 14.5, so again, you can pin and weld it or you can just run it on the SBR lower. Let's go back up here to the front. So I don't have a fixed front sight post, but I kind of did what I thought was closest to an iconic, you know, M4 look. We have this Midwest Industries HK style fixed front sight post. So it's the closest thing that I could put on here to kind of mimic a uh, fixed front sight post. Again, nothing super fancy, it's pretty cheap. I, I like them, I've had them for years. Just don't over torque the screws because I have one on my Mark 18 I can knock it off. So there's that, I'm about to drill it off to get it off, but just don't over torque it, listen to the torque specs. Going back from there, we have the Cloud Defensive Owl. This is one of the original Gen 1 Owls. This is a 50,000 Candela, I believe it is. So a little bit less power, but did gets the job done. Kind of fits the build with the bomb proof Riz 2 and, and the old school look. It is a bigger light, so there's that, it's in a Callahan camo. Looks pretty darn good. I really like the way this thing looks. It performs really well. Got your pressure pad integrated into the top here, so you just tap that guy. 
click and hold or click and release. Moving down to the bottom now, we have the Troy vertical grip on here. Huge fan of Troy vertical grips. Huge fan, they have a little bit of storage down here. They actually come with a little section to elongate this and make it more like a broomstick. If that's sort of your thing. I like the short stubby guys. There's that, it is waterproof. Got a rubber O-ring in there for sealing. I do have a QD point over here. This just came on my Arsenal AK, came in the back. It is not the best QD point. Spins free, which I don't really like at all. But again, just sticking with what I had in the drawer, kind of complete this upper is good enough. Back here, we have the TA31 four by 32 ACOG with a Tenebrex kill flash. It is sitting on a Unity mount and it has the Holosun 507C on the offset here. This Unity mount was way too gold for me. So I painted it just to give you a bit of an idea of what how gold it really was. It was like a real gold. It wasn't like a desert dirt or a, or a not like a Geisley, more like a Geisley than it is a Daniel Defense uh, brown. It was just a little too gaudy for me. So I painted over it and it served a great purpose. I wish it was QD, it's not. But again, mount it all the way to the back. I don't have a rear backup set on here yet. I'm deciding if I wanna move this forward and put a backup sight here in the back or just throw it right in the front. But again, because it's not a QD, it's kind of pointless to be honest with you because if, if this ever went down, I'm probably dead anyways. If it did ever go down, there's really no way quickly for me to remove it without tools in order to use a backup iron sight anyways, but I still will put one on here that way. I keep tools in my kit so I can remove stuff like this usually. So with that being said, I know it's a little silly having a front backup, but not a rear. I understand, but things are what they are. Moving back from there, I have my absolute favorite charging handle, the Geisley Airborne charging handle. Huge fan. That's what I was running on my Mark 18. Took it right off there. Threw it on here. Really great charging handle. Inside, I have my Daniel Defense BCG. This is the same bolt carrier group that was on my Mark 18. It has probably around... 6,000 rounds on it, mostly all suppressed, so it's still chugging along. And all of that is sitting on a Daniel Fence lower with a Geisley G2S trigger. It's about a two and a half pound first stage and then a two and a half pound second stage, so two stage trigger, I'm a huge fan of those. Radian and B selector switch on the 45 and then just a mil spec parts kit. Besides that, I uh, changed it out to a K2 grip and a B5 stop bond stock. And in here, I'm still running the H3 buffer that came with the Mark 18, but Daniel Defense is sending me out some different buffer springs and weights to kind of play around with this upper receiver and see what it really likes. And eventually I'm gonna tune this thing to the RC2, which I am waiting on right now. It is in ATF jail. So I'm gonna be seeing, and I'll let you guys know kind of what buffer weight and spring is gonna be running best, whether suppressed, unsuppressed, all that good stuff. For the meantime, it'll probably be with the Sandman S. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up the unboxing slash first look, first impressions of this upper receiver group. If you guys have any comments, let me know down in the comment section below. Any comment really helps the algorithm guys. If you guys are subscribed, Thank you so much for your loyalty. If you're not subscribed, check the subscription, guys, because it really helps us grow. It gives me the motivation to keep pumping these videos out. If you guys notice the shirt, I did have a baby recently, so thank you in advance for all those well wishes. It's kind of the reason I'm behind on creating content and a little sleep deprived, if you can tell in my eyes. But I want to get back at it, guys. I'm really excited about these projects we have coming up, as I mentioned. And I just appreciate you guys staying to the end of the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay dangerous. Ranger Bro, out.